All right, good evening. I will, uh, uh, it's now 6 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, August 24th, 2023, and I call the meeting of the Bellevue Planning Commission to order. If you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Roll call, please. Mr. Hankins? Present. Mr. Jacobson? Mr. Sims? Present. Ms. Taylor Jones? Present. Mr. Arney? Present. Mr. Ackley? Here. Mr. Lassenberg? Present. Mr. Bennett? Here. Mr. Parent? Here. Okay, this meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act, a copy of which can be found in the back vestibule uh, of the hearing room. Um, at this time, I'd ask all commissioners and those in the uh, audience to please check your cell phone, silence them, um, put them on vibrate so we don't disturb the proceedings. Thank you for that. I know I've forgotten before. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to revise or approve the Planning Commission's meeting minutes from the August 7th, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to approve is written. Second. Ackley and Bennett. Yep, motion by, sec motion by Ackley, second by Bennett.
All voted yes, motion carried. All right, at this time I'd like to accept into the record all staff reports, attachments, memos, and handouts regarding each application. Staff, any updates or additions? No updates. Thank you. All right, next we have the consent agenda, public hearings. So these- I made a motion to- Oh, you're right. Make a motion to approve of the application packages as provided. Second. All right, motion second. All voted yes, motion carried. All right, sorry, now we'll go to uh, the consent agenda public hearings. Um, so these two items will be, uh, I'll, I'll read what they are and then if there's uh, any comments or questions, we'll pull them off, otherwise we'll approve them as, uh, as one vote. So uh, 2A, request to final plat lots one through six and out lots A through F, Cardinal Commons edition, being a replat of lots seven and eight, Old Orchard Place, Applicant is Excel Development Group, General Location South 13th Street and Casper Street, case number S230610, and 2B, request to rezone lot 144 Knob Hill from BG to RS84 for the purpose of an existing single family residence. Applicant David and Deborah, oh, this is, uh, how do you say this? Raspirsky. Raspirsky. Uh, location 610 Knob Hill Terrace, case number Z2307-15. Staff, any updates? No. Okay. Commissioners? I'd make a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Second. And these items will go to the City Council for public hearing on September 19th, 2023. All right, next uh, we will go to our public hearings. Um, we have two, two items for public hearing this evening. Uh, for each of those, I will announce the case and then ask there's any updates from the planning department. After that, the applicant will have the opportunity to present their request. After the applicant has been heard, the public will be allowed to provide any testimony they would like considered in the record. Uh, those testifying should come to the podium, state their name and spell their name and sign in for the record. Uh, testimony will be limited to five minutes. I don't think we have a lot of people here, so we'll stay with five minutes. We won't have to shorten that tonight. Um, after the testimony is taken, the applicant will have the opportunity for a rebuttal, after which we'll close the public hearing. And our kind of our rule here, the golden rule we have at the Planning Commission is to treat others who are speaking in the same manner as which you would like to be treated when speaking. All right, so uh, our first public hearing is uh, item 3A, a request for site plan approval for lot one Kennedy Town Center, replat eight, being a replat of lot seven, 75. Kennedy Town Center and lots five and six. Kennedy Town Center, replat three. A small subdivision plat, lots one and two, and out lot A. Kennedy Town Center, replat eight. Applicant, Parviz Adamov. General location, West Chandler Road and South 22nd Street. Case number Z. 2307-14 and S2307-13. Staff, any updates? Yes, the applicant is requesting a continuance this evening to the September 28th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Um, he and his engineer would like time to address some additional technical revisions, so they are requesting the continuance for one month. Okay. Is there anybody here that was here to speak on that item? So we take a motion to continue. I'll move to continue to September 28th. Second. All voted yes, motion carried. All right, so this item will be continued to the September 28th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. All right, uh, next we have our second public hearing, which is uh, item 3B, a request to rezone lot one, 
College Apartments Edition from RG8 to RG8-PS with site plan approval for the purpose of multifamily development. Applicant Elevate Lofts, LLC. General location, 400 West 19th Avenue. Case number Z2210-12. Staff, any updates? No updates. Um, I'll go ahead and provide a brief summary if the applicant and or his engineer want to come forward and get signed in. Um, this request is for a request to rezone. Um, the property is presently zoned RG8, which allows high density multifamily residential. Um, the applicant is requesting a zoning to RG8 PS. The PS overlay um, just allows some flexibility with a site plan as far as having the multiple buildings on one lot, as well as dealing with some of the issues with topography um, and the uniqueness of the property. The request is for 168 apartment units in four buildings. Um, historically, this property was known as the College Apartments. Previously, there were buildings that dated back to the 1900s. Um, they're constructed in 1900. Those buildings were recently demoed within the last year, and the property is presently vacant. Um, in addition to what's being presented tonight, the applicant previously had um, tax increment financing approved for this property. City of Council approved the redevelopment plan and the subsequent TIF agreement last year, so that is in place for the property. Um, in reviewing this property, you know, staff looked at items such as infrastructure, drainage. Again, this is a difficult property to develop. Um, all things we want to take into consideration when looking at the redevelopment of this area. Not only did our engineers look at this, but the city also contracted out with a third party with JEO. Um, their engineers looked at it as well, um, specifically the drainage plan just to make sure that um, everything was in conformance with our current code and regulations. Um, the comp plan shows this area as being multifamily residential, so the request is also in conformance with the comprehensive plan, the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Um, for those reasons, uh, staff is recommending approval of this request, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Coster uh, with TD2. He's the applicant's engineer. Yes, as, as she said, my name is Andrew Coster, uh, 10836 Old Mill Road, uh, Omaha 68164. Uh, I'm civil engineer on the project. Um, she explained everything we're trying to do here. Uh, just generally, the site drains from north to south, um, and we we know that this site sits above quite a few residential properties, and so we, we just, uh, really looked into what the best way was to manage the stormwater runoff on the site. Um, we over-designed the storm sewer and the uh, detention basin on the south end of the site to make sure that, or to do, to do as much as we can to avoid any uh, downstream issues uh, for the houses that surround this property. Uh, like she said, there's 168 uh, apartment units that are proposed, um, and we're in general conformance with uh, the regulations that uh, that apply to the site. And if you have any questions, I, I'm here to answer them. Thank you. We'll do the public hearing, and then if there's anything, you can come back up. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, at this time, I'll open the public hearing. If anyone cares to provide public testimony on this matter, whether in favor or in opposition, Please come forward, state your name, and sign in. Hi, my name's Karen McAndrew. I live at 410 West 20th Avenue. Let me write this down. Good evening. Most adults have lived in an apartment sometime in their life, and a lot of adults have children. Most of us understand those aspects of life. This project, as shown, has a huge problem with density of people and density of cars. Elevate Lofts is asking to build four buildings that will comprise 168 units of multifamily apartments. To reach 168 units, 
these buildings will need to be three to four stories tall. Suppose two to three four, two thirds to three fourths of the units are rented by a single parent with two children, and this family has one car. Two thirds of your units would equal 112 cars, 112 parents, <coughs> excuse me, and 224 children. Three fourths of your units would equal 126 cars and 126 parents and 252 children. No matter which school any of these children attend, they are all within walking distance. The sidewalks, though, are intermittent, a strip here, a strip there. These children will end up walking in the streets, putting themselves and motorists in danger. Their parents will face a nightmare of time and traffic, trying to get out of this residential area and onto an arterial road so they can get themselves to work. <clears throat> There's only one way out of the apartment complex, and all cars must use it. This is an old residential area, and Wayne Street is one of the steepest streets in Bellevue. Think winter driving, as well as snow removal. There's no easy way for one car from this location to, down, to navigate to an arterial road, let alone 126 cars. No matter which direction they turn, coming out of the apartments, they will have three to four stop signs. Then they will hit the three schools daily traffic, and yet they still won't be in an arterial road. How long does it take for 126 cars to each stop at several stop signs, wait for school traffic, and navigate to an arterial road? Do you want to be car 126 or car 168? Every weekday morning will be the equivalent to leaving a football game, a parade, or the air show. What a stressful situation to look forward to. In the recommendation report in your paper, section three, and under the heading of analysis number seven, this addresses amenities such as lounge, fitness room, pool, outdoor grills, and maybe even a dog run. These items are not shown on the site plan. Why? Because there's no room on the site for these amenities. And if they are not on the site plan, I bet you they will not get built. Where are 250 children going to play? In their apartments, at Washington Park, on Missions Field? or at the lone basketball hoop at Central Grade School. Some of them might, but they'll walk in the streets to get there. Most of them will be playing in the hallways of these buildings. If you don't have a play area, be prepared for your buildings to take the brunt of these children's activities. There's one more place for these children to hang out. The stormwater basin, currently full of green algae, but it offers an enticing adventure full of slime, gunk, and who knows what bacteria. I've painted a low-end scenario. In real life, the number of children could easily 30 be- 30 seconds left. 30, um, as members of the Bellevue Planning Commission, I urge each of you to take a trip up this hill, see for yourselves exactly what the area looks like, uh, you need to drive the winding streets, visualize the amount of time it would take. The apartment complexes of this size are usually built with a quick access to an arterial road or the convergence. If you have not contacted East High, Mission Junior High, or Central Grade School to find out how many new students will impact their facilities regarding building space, class size, food service, teachers, paraprofessionals, and a myriad of other ways I've not mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, this current project is not a project for this piece of land. Significant modifications are necessary. Thank you. Thank you. you did you sign in? Yes? Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Hi, I'm going to be silly. Um, someone else wasn't able to make it tonight and asked that I present on his behalf. So do I get 10 minutes? <laughs> I'm just asking. No. Um, he just called right when I leave because his wife got very sick. I am Karen Albers. I live at 1807 Madison Street. And um, I'd like to say that um, a Piggybacking on Karen, we as neighbors would really like to have a thorough traffic design done before any plans go forward, especially during the winter, because if you live in that neighborhood, you already know it's a nightmare trying to get from point A to B during the heaviest hours. So I'm going to cut out nice as ease and just give you a list of things since we're limited on time. Um, one of our biggest concerns among many is the light pollution that will be created by putting all these parking lots and buildings right along our property lines for the houses along. On the map up above, Ms. Curry, you can see that. You mind if I walk? Can you hear me if I talk? No, you have to stay by the map, Ms. Sorry, otherwise we can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't. Otherwise we can't pick you up. Okay, got it. No. Um, so, oops, there, if you go from north to south, that whole property, there is pro projected to have parking all along near that blue line, the furthest to the uh, my left. And we are very concerned with all the light traffic and noise pollution, or the light pollution and noise pollution, that anytime people pulling in and out, their lights will be affecting our main living rooms, our bedrooms, and the alike. Um, we also are concerned with the fact that there are many code violations against Mr. Panpianco's property. Um, for the last 20 years, he has been the owner of the property under various uh, management companies. For example, 400 West or 400 Bell West, something like that, then Stella Real Estate, Real Estate and now Elevate loss, which is currently inactive with the state of secretary. So we are very concerned about all his currents. There is a current lien from the city on his property because he did not properly and quickly rid his property of a very dangerous tree. And there's many branches and um, waste, unattended, invasive species all over the property, invading all the electrical lines. Um, he has been penalized by the Nebraska Real Estate Board for um, ethics and contract problems. He is required to take six hours, three in ethics, three in contracts, by um, the 27th of this month. Uh, he was also fined uh, an amount for those violations. Um, again, we've talked about noise and light pollution. Um, and again, that is our concern with orientation, luckily. Um, the man from TD explained why they could not use the manhole that's on 19th because one of the buildings is too low to be able to go up to it. And I will talk to him more about that so I understand it more. But our um, biggest concerns, again, is the pollution, the current. We have currently have runoff. Mr. Panianko has gone above and beyond to prove that he is not a great property manager, that he continues to neglect that property. And our concerns are going forward as we're inviting someone who caused our property to become blighted, downgraded, because he chose to neglect and not take care of his duties as a property manager. And we continue to get damage from his properties due to all the runoff, all the weeds that he does not maintain or properly take care of. And real quick for Mr. Butler, <laughs> he wanted to say again, his was against neglected property. He noticed marijuana is growing on the field. He also noticed there's a trailer sitting on the property and wasn't sure if that was okayed. Um, and his concern too was that the water is continually causing us all damage. We're curious as to where the snow will be shoveled when you put all the cement in. We know putting in cement in buildings drastically changes water flow. Um, and some of the issues that have been with the property since it was conceived in the 1900s um, have gotten worse and have not been addressed. The former pool that was there had to be taken out because, again, the weight and the inability to properly um, 30 provide, seconds left. provide sewage caused problems. Same with the dog runs. All the poop runs into our yards. Um, and uh, we just feel that we need to have someone responsible. We realize the project's going in. But we want to make sure it is a manageable size for our neighborhood. 
So max 25 apartments, and we prefer the orientation face 19, not run east-west. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I you. appreciate you giving me this time. Did you sign in? Yes, I did. Right, thank but you I didn't sign Scott in. No, just yourself. That's okay. fine. Thank you. Oops. Let me finish it. Someone else needs to talk. I just need to finish putting my address in. Hello. Hello. My name is Buddy Whited. I live at 1905 Madison Street. Um, we understand, my wife and I understand that the project's going in. Apartments are fine. We're fine with this. But the number of apartments is an issue. We have two little boys ourselves. We understand just how loud and how much energy they have and what they need to do to wear that off. They have a yard, dog, play set. But if you have 120 some units, even if just half of those has one kid, you're looking at over 75 kids. That's um, unfortunately just not enough space for them. Where are they gonna go? What are they gonna do? The parks around are useful, but as my predecessors have said, sidewalks aren't always there. When I go to work in the morning, especially now that the schools have begun again, there are still kids walking in the street. Obviously, I'm avoiding them and they're avoiding me, but if you add 120 apartments, that number is going to go up. Safety, unfortunately, while it's on everyone's mind, accidents happen. People can and will get hurt. We can't have that number up, go up. That's all I really want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on a second, Larry. Anybody else want to? I'm going to close the public hearing, so hold on a second. Yeah. Okay, so in case it wasn't said earlier, I'm Claudia Schwarting, 1808 Madison Street in Bellevue. And um, before you, this is approved, we would appreciate a traffic study in the wintertime so you can see what we're dealing with with the snow and the Wayne Street Hill and just the traffic so um, that's it thank you hi guys hello my name is Tyler Mueller um, I actually live off um, down the road next to Washington Park, but my parents live at 406 West 20th Avenue, and that is the street that I grew up on since the second grade. Um, I just am reiterating that and also coming from someone who grew up around this neighborhood. Um, that hill is one of the best for kids because it is nice and steep, so we got scooters, bikes, and what not going down that road and adding, like they said, the amount of traffic to that is not only detrimental to the people driving um, to be extra wearyful, but also the kids, like they said, even if it's just half of them have one kid, that's still a lot of kids. And you turn right, you're at Mission Middle School, you turn left, you're curved up and around at East. And so like they said, traffic is an issue. Um, but then also my dad um, wanted me to touch on the drainage and whatnot. What they're worried about is because what part of the drainage leads down our front hill and whatnot. And ever since I was a kid, I've never seen it work. I've never seen actual water, but we know where the grade is and we see where the release is and whatnot. But 
water's not coming out of it. It trickles, if you know what I mean. But I mean, it is it is not being, and even if it did work, it would just go right into the street where these kids are walking and whatnot. So just, yeah, my parents wanted to reiterate the drainage and, you know, just the kids. So thank you. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. So applicant, would you guys like to come up and respond to some of the concerns that residents have? While they're coming up, I think I'll go ahead and answer some of the questions because some of these questions are probably um, for me. I kind of made a list of things that were touched on, so let me address them. Uh, density. So currently, this is zoned RG8. Um, our zoning ordinance says, this district is intended to permit very high density development, multi-story apartment development, and other uses that are typical and compatible in the operation of apartment houses. This property has over 182,000 square feet. RG8 allows for, uh, for multifamily, it's a unit for every 800 square feet of lot area. Based on the lot area that they have, they could have 219 units. So I, I understand and I appreciate that 168 is a lot to the neighbors. Um, however, under the current zoning, they could have up to 219 units um, that would be allowed under the current zoning. One access point, um, fire code allows one access point for the number of units they are proposing. So they are within fire code. Um, our fire department, um, our battalion chief, he did review this and he was okay with the proposed access. Um, concerns with the school and you know the influx of students. We also route this application. Bellevue Public Schools did get um, a review form. They did review this request. So they did not provide any comment back to us, but they are aware of the proposal and the request. Um, as far as light pollution, again, I understand that's a concern. If, if the development is approved, um, they have to provide downcast lighting. They can't pollute, they can't have light pollution or they can't shine a light onto a neighboring residential property. So as part of the building permit process, we will have them verify that it will be downcast lighting, um, cut off lighting, so it can't be a spotlight into somebody's backyard. Um, parking up against neighbors' homes. We did take that into consideration, understand that that is a very reasonable concern, because yes, um, the way the parking lot is oriented, you would have cars that are going to face the residential neighborhood. Um, that was brought up to the applicant. What they have done is they have increased the amount of shrubbery and um, trees along those areas that abut a neighboring uh, a property. Understand it might not be perfect, um, but they are providing something that is more than what the code allows. Um, this is something that was done, a, a recent example we had that was this very same thing was the apartments that went in um, Ascend on 75 and uh, Nebraska Drive and Childs Road, similar situation. Um, it had the zoning in place. The neighbors were very concerned about uh, parking like the car lights in their neighborhood. And so um, that's exactly what city council had the developer do. They had them um, provide for extra shrubs, extra trees, extra vegetation to help mitigate that impact to them. Um, as far as drainage, again, yes, the site drains from north to south. Yes, it's a steep property. Um, again, not only did our engineers look at the drainage report and that was provided and the drainage plan, but the city also contracted out with JEO and contracted out with a third party to make sure that um, we had a second opinion of what was going on on the site. So what I can tell you is um, our city engineers as well as JEO are comfortable with what the applicant is proposing as far as drainage and runoff. Um, no, no, the public hearing is closed. 
as far as code violations, I can't speak to those. Um, you know, I, I don't know what all has transpired from a code standpoint. Um, you know, I would have to run that through code enforcement and find that out. So I maybe the applicant or property owner can address that as far as weeds and code violations. Um, also, um, they can address the recreational needs being met. As far as traffic, this will be a mix of studio one and two bedroom units. Um, so some of these will be studio apartments. You know, it won't be large enough for a family to move into. Um, these are things that our engineers take into consideration when they request a traffic study. Um, they take density and they also look at um, the existing street layout, collectors, um, arterials, local streets, all of that. Um, they were comfortable with the, the density being proposed and the access being proposed. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to the developer and uh, his team. Thank you, Larry Smith with Avant Architects, 8340 West Dodge Road in Omaha. Um, I just want to make a quick quote. You mentioned that the, the number of units, 168, but I just wanted to, to clarify that of that 168, 22 of those are loft units. They're fairly small units, about 650 square feet. 132 of those are one bedroom units. So the majority really are for single uh, people. The one bedrooms uh, vary from 650 to 700 square feet, and there are only 14 two bedroom units. So that just helps break the density down a little bit. Just wanted to be clear on the record with that. Thank you very much. Andrew Coster, do I announce? Um, just in response to a few of the comments that we received, um, there was comments about the, in particular, the drainage. Um, I understand that there have been issues on this site uh, in the past and that they had uh, berms in place to kind of protect the downstream properties. Uh, what we've done is design a site with uh, concrete parking lots, um, interior or underground storm sewers. And so what should happen is we should capture uh, 90% of the site with underground storm sewer and route, route that down to uh, the detention basin on the south side. And so we should actually improve drainage to the neighboring properties rather than uh, worsen it. Um, and then also the, the drainage basin itself is designed to be a dry basin, so it's not meant to hold any water. So we shouldn't see algae or ponding or anything like that. Um, that would be negative a negative impact to, to the children. Hello. Uh, so I, I am Andy Panabianco, uh, which my name was mentioned earlier. So I, I wanted to speak to uh, just a couple of things briefly. Um, you know, I, there, I, I think that you are correct. There, so there was a tree uh, that we had received a letter on, and we did not make it out there in time. It was over the summer, and I, I don't have a good reason for that. We were trying to get some bids. I think the city took care of it. Um, and obviously, we're, we're happy to pay that. I do have a, uh, an invoice um, for, that, uh, for that removal. So we're obviously happy to take care of that. You know, and, and just to give a little history, and, and I want to kind of just say something, you know, for the neighbors that are here. <clears throat> you know, our, our goal is definitely to improve, um, you know, improve the property, improve the drainage. We don't want to be uh, a bad neighbor. Uh, we've worked very hard to make sure that there's a lot of things in place that, um, like Tammy had mentioned, are not required, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we're doing them proactively uh, with, with the bushes and fence kind of along the outside. So, uh, and then a, a larger buffer in the backyard. We actually moved the buildings around to make sure that we had plenty of buffer space on the back lot um, so there wouldn't be any, uh, uh, any light disturbance to the neighbors. Um, we've worked really hard to ensure that uh, with what we're doing, uh, the drainage is improved not only beyond where it was or where it currently is, but uh, we, we want to just over engineer or overdo whatever we can to make sure that we don't run into any problems because it is important to us to 
to not be a bad neighbor and uh, to not be a bad part of the neighborhood. Um, you know, it also as, as Andrew had mentioned, uh, you know, the, the majority of these units are studios and one bedrooms. Um, you know, it's, of course, we would never deny anyone because they have children, but it, it's really it, it's really more geared for like a young professional. Uh, Bellevue has a real need for housing, as everyone knows. Uh, so we're trying to really kind of hit that niche and trying to, uh, you know, continue to improve the, the old town area, um, you know, and, and give and give some choices for young professionals in the immediate uh, location. Um, so yeah, I just, just wanted to mention those items. So thank you. Thank you. Can we make sure you sign in if you didn't? Thank you. All right, commissioners, questions, comments? Uh, one point, could we bring up the uh, plan to show where the sidewalks are proposed? Maybe the public would like to see that since there were some questions about lack of sidewalks. So there's interior sidewalks and then there's a sidewalk proposed along uh, West 19th Ave that will connect over to Wayne Street. Might be hard to see on the site plan. I have to zoom in a little bit tighter there, Angela. Thanks. They're shown along, can you scroll up? There we go. It's, it's shown along 19th and then it goes down and connects into uh, Wayne Street. Okay. And with the city that proposed sidewalks, those are acceptable? Yeah, they have to have sidewalks. So um, as part of any development that comes in, any building permit that kicks in the requirement for sidewalk unless there's a waiver, but yes, um, they are providing you know the interior sidewalk and then the, also the sidewalk connection to the neighborhood. Thank you. And um, the previous property, how many units did that have? Just for comparison purposes, maybe you don't know. 39. Oh, 39. It had three buildings. Three buildings. Um, yep, and there was, let me look. It's still on the assessor's website. One building had eight units. According to the assessor's website, there was 42 units. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. Yeah. Question I have, <clears throat> um, going back to the developer, um, it, there's a comment here in one of your letters stating that you will need to connect sewer um, between existing homes. Can you talk about that plan and have the homeowners been contacted? Yes, uh, we've spoken to uh, one homeowner whose lot we're proposing to go to bore sanitary sewer between two homes. Uh, we have an easement in place from that, that homeowner, a permanent and a temporary easement. Uh, what should happen is they'll set up uh, equipment on either either side of the, on the upstream and the downstream side. Um, they shouldn't have to open cut any, uh, any sewer between those houses at all. It should be bottom to top without disturbance at the ground level. Um, and I did speak with, uh, we, we have the easement from that property owner, and I did speak with the adjacent property owner, Jim Mueller, earlier today as well to, to talk through that process um, and answer his questions. That's all that I have right now. Thank you. Question for staff. I guess a couple of the comments that came up address where can kids go and play areas and things and based on the site plan. Again, I appreciate Mr. Smith commented that most of these are going to be loft or single, but there will be kids. I guess can you maybe explain to the public the planning department rationale on when you do or don't require on-site parks and things or what the rationale is for not having if there aren't any? Sure. Um, we don't have any specific requirement for um, multifamily developments. Um, typically, we put that back on the developer um, to provide what they believe will be necessary to serve the development. So one of our first questions is always, what are the, you know, what, what are you providing to meet the recreational needs for um, your residents? In this case, they're uh, proposing the fitness room, kind of a 
a gathering area. They refer to it as a lounge, but most uh, clubhouse type scenarios have like a common space that residents can use, can either rent out, reserve, whatever the case may be when they have family. That's what they are proposing for this. Again, one of the things that we look at is we look at kind of the mix of apartments. Um, if there were, if this was, you know, three and four bedroom apartments, you know, we've had some uh, complexes come through that have been geared toward family, the three and four bedroom apartments. In those cases, they have provided playgrounds on site. Um, this is a situation where, again, we look to the, the applicant to provide what they believe is necessary based on the market that they are targeting. Um, it was mentioned that they've, you know, offered the possibility of a pool, outdoor grill, dog run. Since it's not shown on the, the site plan, those would not be required at this time. If down the road that's something that they want to do, um, you know, such as the pool, they'd have to get that permitted, and we would look at it at that point. But it is correct that we would not count on that happening since it's not part of the initial site plan. So they will have to follow through with the fitness area, with the, the lounge or the, you know, the recreational room within the building, but that would be what would be required as part of the site plan. I guess another item that was brought up by a couple folks was the lack of sidewalks within the neighborhood. Again, I know on site, we're gonna require it once we get off the neighborhood. Is that something city council can address or require? Can you maybe refresh our memory when the school went in on Child's Road and the apartments went in across from them? It seems like somebody put in extra sidewalks leading back to those apartments that were offsite. I just don't recall. The city did it because it was across our property. <laughs> Um, so we did it in that scenario. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a it's an issue. Um, it's an issue all over town, and unfortunately, the city has not come up with a you know a solution to provide everyone a sidewalk. Again, we have the requirement where if an individual property owner requests a permit, you know, say they add a detached garage or add an addition onto the house, then they're required to have a sidewalk unless they are granted a waiver by public works or by city council. Um, obviously, we make the developer do it. Um, and yes, it's, it's one of those things where the city is constantly looking at specific areas of town, you know, based on development, based on schools, based on other conditions, um, to see what we can do and, you know, how we can facilitate that connectivity. It is, it is a priority. It is important. Um, but yeah, they, there are areas of town where we still have sidewalks with gaps and it, it does need to be addressed. And I guess final question for the applicant. One of the comments we received this evening talked about where would the snow go in terms of, again, I don't know if you plan for, does that get dumped right into the storm drainage area? You got a section of the parking lot will go on that sits in a low area that it melts off easily within that or? I, I think that the, the basin would be the main, um, would be the best place for it. Uh, we haven't really given that a lot of thought elsewhere on site. Um, I imagine it would go anywhere that they could find room for it, but it wasn't specifically addressed. Okay. And if, if you're okay. Yep. Uh, just a quick question on that. So the basin that you're referencing, is that the dry basin? Yes. And so as I'm looking here and I, you know, I've personally looked at the property, you know, when you look at that slope going to the south, specifically more towards what is that 20 i think that's 20th ave mm -hmm. um you know I'm, I'm looking at that and i know that grade is gonna probably it'll probably be 20 percent, i imagine on that area once you build it up to try to level the, the ground out mm -hmm. what other assurances have you put in place to ensure drainage other than the minimum brought on by the city i mean we we are doing more than the minimum minimum currently uh, that basin is, is supposed to be designed for what we call the 10 year storm. Uh, it's supposed to hold that and um, discharge. We're, we're allowed to uh, uh, let the 100 year storm overtop typically. And what we've done instead is that basin is, is large enough that even in a larger storm, the 100 year storm, it's fully contained in that basin. So it would have to be a pretty significant event for there to be concerns there. Uh, it's also been designed with an overflow spillway on the west end. So uh, stormwater would overtop there before it overtopped to the south towards the adjacent homes. Uh, 
that's that's what we've done. Thank you. Essentially, sorry, essentially a developer is required, you know, we're part of the, the Papio watershed. So any developer that comes through, we have the same regulations all through the watershed, you know, whether it be Omaha, Papillion, La Vista, um, Bellevue. So they are required to meet those. Um, so they're required. Essentially, they can't negatively impact the neighbors, right? I mean, the neighbors take on a certain amount of water now. Um, this development can't negatively impact what is happening out there now. So they have to capture the first half inch and that basin has to slowly release it over time. So those basins, yes, are typically dry basins. You know, it may be wet for a certain period of time until that water flows out and is released because it can't release all at once. <laughs> it has to be released slowly, typically over a 24 hour period. So that's generally how they're designed. Perfect. Thank you for the clarification. Can we go back to the analysis section E number seven, where we did discuss the applicant will offer a fitness room and lounge and amenities. Now we have three buildings with 168 apartments. So where will, do we envision that the lounge and fitness room are gonna be? Is that part of the three initial buildings that's going to be sectioned off and a section of those reserved amongst the apartments or is that an additional? No, it'll be area? part of one of the existing buildings. If it were going to be a separate building, it would have to be shown on the site plan. So it'll be part of one of the buildings. Tammy, if the uh, if the rezoning is approved tonight, um, do they have to come back again? Does the applicant have to come back again uh, for uh, the site approval for the uh, the development itself? So this is the approval for the development itself. So what would happen is you folks will make a recommendation to city council and then city council will vote on it one way or the other. Um, it currently has an RG8 zoning, so with the proper platting, they could come in and gild, get a building permit tomorrow if they met the regulations, if they met the setbacks. What they're asking is for the site plan, the PS overlay, to allow them some flexibility with the development. Um, so that's what they are requesting. So if, if the site plan is approved by city council, then that's what they would have to come in and build exactly. Thank you. But they couldn't change density without coming back? Correct. So if this particular site plan would be approved, they have to build that. If they want to make any kind of significant change, if they want to change density, if they want to, you know, rearrange a building, if they want to do an extra building, if they want, you know, any of that would have to come back before the public hearing process. Tammy, question. So uh, there's been a lot of conversation about parking and lights. So it says 255 total stalls. How many are required? Do we know that? The zoning ordinance requires um, on a standard zoning uh, two stalls per unit. Um, with the site plan, it does give them flexibility. It gives city council flexibility to approve something different. What's being proposed here based on the you know studio and one bedroom mix is one and a half per unit. Um, I can tell you that city council has approved one and a half per unit on other recent developments. They've never approved less. And again, typically what we look at is if this was 168 three or four bedroom units, I, I personally wouldn't be acceptable or find it acceptable to have one and a half stall per unit. But um, since it's largely studio and one bedrooms, that's something that um, staff takes into consideration. Am I allowed to ask a resident a question without opening the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mrs. Elbers, can I ask you a question? Please. <laughs> uh, could, you, so, could you zoom into her? She's lot 18 on the west side there for me, Angela. Which one is that? Uh, 1807. She's got the green in the backyard right there. So, you, you know, we talked about the light coming off of the off the property. So they're doing a 30-foot landscape buffer, but I kind of just, there's that area Looks like an old tax lot. Most of you have pretty deep, looks like backyards. Is that area, uh, I was out there, it's hard to tell. There's a lot of trees along there right now. Is that your property or is that on the developer's property? Do you know? Um, 
we went through the whole neighborhood had to go through because city the city of Bellevue had a different plot and plat line mm -hmm. than Sarpy County. So we have added our backyards to our backyards at our property. Um, his fence runs right on the property line. And what is in the, I need to be closer. I can't see the map, so let me go closer. <laughs> invasive species known as uh, priors of heaven, stink weed, whatever, because they haven't been consistently trimmed down like they were supposed to, they've gotten to tree size. Okay. There's also broken trees in there. They're pushing the fence into our property. So our, the fence, wherever the fence is, that is the actual property line. Okay. And since my pine tree is right there in the middle, you can see my green grass. Yep. And then the pine tree's there. That's on my property. I guess where I was going with that, it looks like at some point in, in time, you guys, all the properties along there were able to add on to their, they, they bought some parts of the tax lot. So we typically didn't. typically there's a hundred foot uh, debt deep. And my, my, my JS is showing the depth. So their normal lots, a hundred foot deep, guys, is where I'm going with this. And then they have an additional, it varies anywhere from 20 right. to 40 to 50 foot across all the back of that. So not only do we have the 30 foot buffer that the new developer is going to put in, you also have, in my opinion, an extra 20 to 40 foot buffer depending on where you're at along there and that's kind of what I was trying to understand so no no that line the further line out is the correct property line correct that was again it was a just a Mrs. Charlotte or Charlotte Lawrence used to own it because when their farm line got divided for a good section that last part we all thought we owned the yards and we found out we didn't so she had been paying the taxes and on that property all the time it did not belong to the college area it did not belong to us it belonged to mrs lawrence and since she was getting up in age she wanted to get all those properties correctly assigned okay. so um, again that was just an error between the city of bellevue and uh, sarpy county plot and plat lines okay thank you mm -hmm. So I guess for me, my, my concern is less with the light overflow because not only do we have, they're doing 30 foot buffer, which is more than what the code requires. We also have this additional buffer that everybody has added onto their backyard at some point in the, uh, in the past. So we're, we're going to have, we're going to have 50, 50 foot potentially behind her house before the, you know, before the lighting in the parking lot. So Ms. Elbers, the public hearing is yeah. closed. You answered oh, my question. Thank you. I didn't answer it correctly for you to understand. It wasn't added. We always thought it was our property. It was just mislabeled. His fence is literally on that blue line. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion, comments? I guess for me, the two items we heard the most about, or three items, one is safety with kids and traffic. Again, from every indication, there's gonna be minimal kids based on the, the lofts <coughs> and single units, not that safety isn't still a concern. Second, with traffic, and Ms. Palm, you explained that basically the city's traffic engineers studied this and determined no need for traffic study, I guess there again, that'd be a question for city council if they would want to study that. Um, and then the third was drainage was brought up several times. And again, I'm confident that with the engineering they have and they are required to capture their water on site that hopefully your drainage should actually get better the issues you're, you're seeing because they'll address that on site. But the, the traffic is probably the one that we, we don't have a solution for and from our um, zoning ordinance our job tonight is to approve based on application before us nothing has been flagged from the city in terms of indicating traffic would be an issue so that becomes more of a political issue for the the city council if they want to if you want to bring your concerns forward to them on trying to require a traffic study Man, I'm sorry. We, we closed the public hearing. We can't take any more comments. Thank you. You'll have your chance to talk to the city council if you want to show up and talk to them. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, if no one has any additional comments, I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. Recommend approval for the request to rezone lot one, college apartments edition from RG8 to RG8PS with site plan approval. 
recommend approval based upon conformance with our zoning ordinances, subdivision regulations, compliance with our comprehensive plan, and lack of perceived negative impact into the surrounding area. I'll second. Okay, motion second. Vote. All voted yes, motion carried. Okay, this item will go to the City Council for public hearing on September 19th, 2023. So if you wanna talk, that's another chance for you guys to get up and talk to the City Council. All right, that ends our public hearings for the night. Uh, we have no current business, so I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Thank you.